the lake of whispers. In the heart of summer, when the sun bore down mercilessly upon the earth, a group of five friends sought solace in the cool embrace of nature. They had grown tired of the city's concrete jungle and its relentless buzz, so they packed their bags with camping gear, snacks, and an eagerness for adventure. Their destination, a remote lake nestled deep within a sprawling forest, far from the reach of cell signals and the noise of civilization. As they trudged through the dense woods, following a barely discernible trail, the air grew thick with humidity. Sweat trickled down their brows, and their laughter echoed off the ancient trees. It was Tom who first caught sight of the lake, a serene expanse of shimmering blue nestled between rolling hills and moss-covered boulders. Its surface was pristine, reflecting the clear sky above like a polished mirror. They quickly set up camp on a grassy knoll overlooking the lake, pitching their tents with the efficiency of seasoned outdoorsmen. Emily, the adventurous spirit of the group, suggested exploring the surroundings before dusk settled in. Jake, always armed with his camera, eagerly agreed, while Sarah and Michael opted to stay behind to tend the campfire and prepare dinner. The sun hung high in the cloudless sky as the trio ventured along the lake's edge, their footsteps softened by the carpet of pine needles beneath them. The tranquility was palpable, broken only by the occasional rustling of leaves or the distant call of a bird. Yet as they neared the western shore where an old weather-beaten cabin stood half-hidden among drooping willows, a peculiar sensation washed over them a sensation that made the hairs on their arms stand on end. Jake, this place gives me the creeps, Jake muttered, adjusting his camera strap nervously. They pushed open the creaking door, revealing a dusty interior frozen in time. Cobwebs adorned the corners and sunlight filtered through cracked windows, casting eerie patterns on the wooden floor. The air inside was thick with the scent of age and neglect, but something else lingered, a faint whispering that seemed to dance on the edge of hearing. Emily whispered, Do you hear that? Jake frowned, his brow furrowed in concentration. It sounds like voices, but I can't make out what they're saying. Suddenly, a shadow passed across the window, causing Emily to jump back with a gasp. Jake's camera clicked reflexively, capturing nothing but the empty interior of the cabin. Yet, the whispers persisted, now accompanied by a soft, rhythmic tapping that seemed to echo from beneath the cabin's floorboards. Jake suggested, we should go, his voice tinged with unease. Emily nodded reluctantly, tearing herself away from the window. They stumbled back outside, blinking in the harsh light of the afternoon sun. Back at camp, Sarah and Michael greeted them with raised eyebrows and knowing smiles. They had sensed the tension that clung to their friends like a shroud, but Emily and Jake offered no explanation. Instead, they retreated into silence, their thoughts consumed by the mysterious cabin and the secrets it harbored. Night fell swiftly over the lake, cloaking the forest in an impenetrable darkness. The crackling campfire cast flickering shadows on the tents, and the stars blinked overhead, indifferent to the turmoil brewing among the friends. Yet, as they lay in their sleeping bags, sleep eluded them, haunted by fragmented whispers that echoed in their dreams. The following morning dawned cool and crisp, the events of the previous day shrouded in a surreal haze. Emily and Jake exchanged cautious glances over breakfast, their minds still grappling with the inexplicable phenomena they had witnessed. They resolved to return to the cabin, to unravel the mystery that lingered like a specter over the lake. Together, 
they navigated the forest once more, guided by an unspoken determination to confront the whispers that had plagued their thoughts. The cabin appeared unchanged in the light of day, its weathered facade staring back at them with silent indifference. This time, they discovered a hidden compartment beneath the cabin's floorboards, a trove of yellowed journals and faded photographs that chronicled the lives of those who had once called the lake their home. Among the artifacts, they found a letter addressed to a long-forgotten lover, its ink smeared with tears and faded with time. The town of Clearwater was known for its endless summers, Days filled with golden sunlight and evenings painted in hues of orange and pink as the sun dipped below the horizon. But this summer was different. Shadows lingered longer, and an eerie silence settled over the town. It began innocuously enough, with the arrival of a new sunscreen at the local pharmacy. Branded as Sunshield, it promised superior protection against harmful UV rays with its advanced formula. For Sarah Jennings, a fair-skinned teenager who spent most of her days outdoors, Sunshield seemed like a godsend. Her mother, worried about her daughter's susceptibility to sunburns, purchased a bottle without hesitation. It came in a sleek silver container adorned with promises of SPF 100 and long-lasting hydration. Sarah eagerly applied it before heading out, feeling reassured by the product's claims. Little did they know, this seemingly miraculous sunscreen would soon change their lives forever. The first application was uneventful. Sarah slathered the creamy lotion on her arms and legs before heading to the beach with her friends. They laughed and splashed in the surf, oblivious to the subtle changes occurring beneath Sarah's skin. As the day wore on and the sun reached its zenith, Sarah noticed a faint tingling sensation where the sunscreen had been applied. She dismissed it as a mild reaction to the sun and shrugged it off, diving back into the waves. As the sun began to set, the tingling sensation grew stronger, but Sarah chose to ignore it, focusing on the beauty of the sunset. The group gathered around a bonfire, sharing stories and laughter, unaware of the changes taking place within Sarah. That evening, as Sarah showered off the salt and sand, she caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror. The day had been long, filled with sun and sea, and she was eager to wash away the remnants of the beach. At first, she thought it was a trick of the light, a play of shadows on her skin. The bathroom light flickered slightly, casting strange shapes that danced across her body. But upon closer inspection, she gasped in horror. Across her shoulders and down her arms were intricate patterns, resembling delicate lacework etched into her flesh. They glowed faintly under the bathroom light, pulsing with an otherworldly rhythm. The glow seemed to have a life of its own, ebbing and flowing like a heartbeat. Fear clenched Sarah's heart as she tried to scrub away the markings, but they resisted her efforts, stubbornly clinging to her skin like a brand. She wrapped herself in a towel, her mind racing with questions and dread. What could have caused this? Was it something she touched? Or perhaps something in the water? And why did the markings seem to shimmer in the moonlight that filtered through her bedroom window? The glow was even more pronounced now, almost mesmerizing in its beauty yet terrifying in its mystery. Days passed, and Sarah became increasingly isolated. Her friends noticed the change in her demeanor. Her once vibrant and outgoing nature replaced by a quiet, withdrawn presence. She no longer joined in on social gatherings or even responded to messages. The isolation was palpable and it weighed heavily on her spirit. Her once outgoing nature replaced by a quiet, withdrawn presence. The lively conversations and laughter that once filled her days were now replaced by silence and solitude. Sarah felt like a ghost in her own life, drifting aimlessly. The markings on her skin grew more pronounced, 
spreading across her body like a creeping vine. They seem to react to the sun, glowing brighter during the day and fading to a faint outline at night. Each morning she would wake up to find new patterns etched into her skin, as if her body was a canvas for some unseen artist. Desperate for answers, Sarah sought solace in online forums and medical websites, but found no mention of a sunscreen causing such bizarre effects. The markings took on a life of their own, weaving intricate patterns that seemed to shift and evolve with each passing day. She spent countless hours researching, hoping to find someone who had experienced something similar, but her efforts were in vain. Sarah felt as though she were losing control of her own body, a prisoner to forces beyond her understanding. The fear and desperation grew with each passing day, leaving her feeling helpless and overwhelmed. She wondered if she would ever find a way to reclaim her life, or if she was destined to be consumed by the mysterious markings forever. One sweltering afternoon, Sarah retreated to the solitude of her backyard, seeking refuge from the prying eyes of her concerned parents. She had been feeling increasingly isolated, her parents' worry only adding to her own growing sense of dread. The sun beat down mercilessly upon her, casting harsh shadows that danced around her feet. The oppressive heat seemed to mirror the turmoil within her, a constant reminder of the changes she couldn't explain. She closed her eyes and let the warmth seep into her skin, momentarily forgetting the nightmare that had consumed her life. The sunlight felt like a fleeting embrace, a brief escape from the reality that awaited her. But as the sun reached its zenith, Sarah's transformation took a chilling turn. The warmth that had once been comforting now felt like a searing brand, igniting a change deep within her. The markings on her skin began to pulse with a newfound intensity, glowing with an unearthly radiance. These markings, which had appeared without warning, now seemed to have a life of their own, pulsating in rhythm with her racing heart. She felt a surge of energy coursing through her veins, filling her with a primal urge she couldn't resist. It was as if an ancient force had awakened within her, demanding to be unleashed. Before she could comprehend what was happening, Sarah's body contorted and shifted, bones cracking and muscles stretching as she underwent a grotesque metamorphosis. The pain was excruciating, yet she couldn't scream. Her voice was trapped within her. When she opened her eyes again, they were no longer human. Instead, they gleamed with an otherworldly luminescence, reflecting the harsh light of the sun. Her vision was sharper, more acute, as if she could see the very fabric of reality unraveling before her. Sarah's hands had elongated into claws, tipped with razor-sharp talons that glistened in the afternoon light. These new appendages felt both foreign and familiar, as if they had always been a part of her, waiting to emerge. Her skin had taken on a shimmering, iridescent quality, as though she were made of living crystal. The transformation was both beautiful and terrifying, a stark contrast to the person she had once been. Horror and disbelief flooded Sarah's mind as she stared at her transformed reflection. She could hardly recognize herself, the person she had been now a distant memory. She had become something beyond comprehension, a creature of light and shadow bound by the strange markings that now adorned her entire body. These markings seemed to tell a story, one that she was only beginning to understand. As Sarah disappeared into the shadows, whispers began to spread through Clearwater. A tale of a girl who had vanished under the light of a blazing sun, leaving behind only a mystery and a trail of shimmering footprints in the dust. The legend of the sunburned, as she came to be known, would haunt the town for years to come. A cautionary tale of the dangers that lurked beneath the summer sun. Her story was told in hushed tones, a reminder of the eerie power of the sun and the secrets it could unveil. Meanwhile, in the depths of the forest, Sarah embraced her newfound solitude, her heart heavy with regret and longing for the life she had lost. She wandered aimlessly, 
a spectral figure among the towering trees, forever marked by the sunscreen that had promised protection, but had instead cursed her with a fate beyond her wildest nightmares. The forest whispered secrets of the past, each rustling leaf a reminder of her irreversible transformation. Sarah's existence became a haunting echo, a tale of caution and sorrow, forever intertwined with the shadows of the forest. The Turner family had eagerly anticipated their summer vacation at the secluded beach house nestled along the windswept coast. For weeks, they had counted down the days until they could escape the hustle and bustle of city life and immerse themselves in the tranquility of sun, sand and sea. Little did they know, however, that their idyllic getaway would soon unravel into a chilling encounter with the supernatural. As they arrived at the beach house, nestled between rugged cliffs and the rolling waves, the Turner family couldn't help but feel a sense of adventure and tranquility wash over them. They were greeted by the salty tang of the ocean and the cries of seagulls wheeling overhead, creating a symphony of nature that was both soothing and invigorating. The house itself was a weathered structure with faded blue shutters and a wraparound porch that offered panoramic views of the beach below. It stood as a silent witness to countless sunrises and sunsets, each one painting the sky in hues of orange and pink. Inside, the rooms were furnished with quaint, mismatched pieces, a testament to decades of summers spent in this remote coastal retreat. The furniture, though old, had a charm that spoke of lazy afternoons and family gatherings. Excitement filled the air as the Turner family unpacked their belongings and settled into their temporary home. The children, Max and Emma, could hardly contain their enthusiasm as they explored every nook and cranny of the house. Max and Emma, the adventurous siblings, immediately dashed down to the beach to explore tide pools and collect shells, their laughter echoing across the shore. They marveled at the tiny creatures they found, each discovery a new adventure. Meanwhile, their parents, David and Lisa, unpacked groceries and planned a leisurely evening barbecue on the porch. They envisioned a night filled with the aroma of grilled food, the sound of waves crashing, and the sight of stars twinkling in the clear night sky. It was the perfect start to their beachside getaway, a moment of peace and togetherness that they would cherish forever. As the sun dipped low on the horizon, casting hues of crimson and gold across the sky, a sense of unease settled over the beach house. Max and Emma returned, their faces flushed with excitement, but they couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. David dismissed their concerns as overactive imaginations, chalking it up to the unfamiliarity of their surroundings. Yet as dusk deepened into night, the atmosphere around the beach house began to change. Strange occurrences began to unfold. The air grew chillier, despite the lingering warmth of the day. Shadows danced on the walls, creating an unsettling ambiance. Cast by the flickering glow of the porch light, the shadows seemed almost alive. Lisa, standing at the kitchen sink washing dishes, felt a shiver run down her spine. She thought she glimpsed a fleeting figure out of the corner of her eye, a shadowy silhouette that vanished as quickly as it had appeared. Her heart raced as she tried to make sense of what she saw. Lisa, did you see that? Lisa asked, her voice trembling slightly. David, glancing up from his laptop where he had been checking work emails, looked puzzled. He furrowed his brow, trying to understand her sudden anxiety. David, see what? Lisa shook her head, dismissing it as a trick of the light. She tried to convince herself it was nothing, but the unease lingered. As the days passed, similar sightings plagued the family. Unexplained noises, objects moving on their own, and fleeting shadows became a regular occurrence. The once peaceful beach house now felt like a place of mystery and fear. Their unease grew with each passing sunset, for it was at dusk that the ghostly figure made its presence known. The air would grow colder, and an eerie silence would settle over the area as if nature itself was holding its breath in anticipation of the spectral visitor. A spectral apparition cloaked in a tattered shroud and with hollow eyes that seemed to pierce through the darkness would appear on the porch just as the last rays of sunlight faded from the sky. 
Its presence was both mesmerizing and terrifying, a haunting reminder of the unknown. Its form was ethereal, wavering like smoke in the evening breeze. The ghostly figure seemed to flicker in and out of existence, as if it were caught between two worlds, neither fully here nor entirely gone. The first time they saw it, they froze in shock. Their hearts pounded in their chests and a cold sweat broke out on their foreheads. It was a moment that would be etched into their memories forever. Emma clung to Max's arm, her breath catching in her throat. She could feel his heart racing just as fast as hers, a silent confirmation that they were both experiencing the same terrifying reality. David and Lisa exchanged nervous glances, unsure of how to explain the inexplicable. Their minds raced with questions and doubts, but no answers seemed to come. They tried to rationalize it, a trick of the light, a reflection from the waves. But deep down, they knew there was something more sinister at play. The ghostly apparition was not just a figment of their imagination, it was a real tangible presence that defied all logic and reason. Each night, as the sun dipped below the horizon, they braced themselves for its return, knowing that their lives would never be the same again. Desperate for answers, Lisa began researching the history of the beach house. She uncovered tales of shipwrecks and lost souls, of fishermen who had perished in violent storms, and of a widow who had waited in vain for her husband's return from the sea. It seemed their tranquil retreat had once been a place of tragedy and heartache, a place where restless spirits lingered, unable to find peace. Armed with this newfound knowledge, David and Lisa confronted the local caretaker, an elderly man named Mr. Jenkins, who had lived in the area all his life. Reluctantly, he confirmed their worst fears. The beach house had long been rumored to be haunted by the ghost of the widow, who had been seen wandering the cliffs at sunset. Her mournful cries carried on the wind. There's no escaping her, Mr. Jenkins murmured, his voice tinged with resignation. She's been here longer than anyone can remember, searching for her lost love. Determined to put an end to the haunting, David and Lisa embarked on a quest to unravel the mystery of the widow's restless spirit. They consulted local historians, delved into archives of old newspapers, and pieced together fragments of a tragic love story that had unfolded decades ago. The widow, they learned, had been driven to madness by grief, and had wandered the cliffs until her own death, her spirit forever bound to the place where she had lost everything. One stormy evening, as the wind howled and waves crashed against the rocks below, David and Lisa stood on the porch, facing the ghostly figure that had haunted their vacation. With trembling voices, they spoke words of compassion and understanding, offering solace to a soul that had suffered for far too long. And as the first rays of dawn illuminated the horizon, the ghostly figure shimmered and dissolved into the morning mist, finally finding peace and release. The beach house stood silent and still, its walls no longer echoing with the echoes of sorrow and loss. As the Turner family packed their belongings to leave Clearwater, they carried with them memories of a vacation that had turned into a journey of discovery and redemption. The beach house remained a place of beauty and tranquility, but now it held a bittersweet legacy, a testament to the enduring power of love and the healing that comes with letting go.